Is this a way to save on gas usage? Hello and welcome back to the channel. And today we're gonna to look at the Tesla Smart Immersion Heater as a means of trying to reduce our gas usage. Now, as you've seen in previous recent videos, um, we've gone down the route of renewable energy. We've got solar panels installed now, we've got a home battery, we've got an electric car. Um, so we're looking at ways of how we can reduce sort of our usage as well as as bills because as we're all aware, especially in the UK, uh, bills have gone astronomical at the moment, you know, almost three, four times what they were. So this I came across um, on Instagram and basically what this does is it's a means of heating your water smartly. Now Plumber Parts did a video and that's um, where I saw this and um, I thought let's give it a go. Now what this is, is it replaces your current immersion heater. So you'll have an immersion heater normally when you've got a hot water cylinder. If you've got a combi boiler it's likely you won't have one so this won't work for you. However, we have um, and as a means of heating water uh, via electricity rather than gas, I'm finding it is much more efficient. Now the reason for that is we have a cheaper overnight rate um, due to having an EV and that's with Octopus Go, uh, the tariff. Now gas currently is 10p per kilowatt. Electricity for me overnight is also 10p a kilowatt. This is a three kilowatt heater. Now the boiler, which is gas, is 24 kilowatt and the boiler is using about nine kilowatts. So we're saving about three kilowatts of energy. Now it's not masses, but that's 30p a day uh, that we will have saved on our gas, as well as reducing our usage and the demand as a country as a whole of what we're trying to achieve is uh, reduce our reliance on gas and, and this could be the means to do that. Now this I have bought um, to give it a go while I wait for a hot water diverter. Now the issue that we were having um, is solar on a good day when we're out of the house if the battery is fully charged we're having excess solar which gets sent back to the grid at 4p a kilowatt. Now if we can use that excess power we get more value from it to use it within the home. So we're looking to heat as hot water with the excess solar. Now we are waiting on a solar edge hot water diverter to be installed but while we wait this seemed a good option that if we look on the, the app for our solar panel system and the battery and we see that we're exporting um, quite a bit of energy then what we can do is we can switch the smart immersion heat on, heat our hot water which then removes the need for the gas to heat it in the day. It's a bit fiddly, but it's a good temporary option. So what I want to do in this video is show you what we've got currently, how this fits in and um, get it installed and show you how it works. Now it's worth noting, I have just removed this. Um, I've been using it for about six weeks now um, and I'll give you a bit of a review uh, later on and tell you how we've got on. So in the box, this is what you get. You get your thermostat and um, that slides into the old, uh, replaces the old thermostat that's on your hot water tank and then you get the smart controller which plugs into there and powers, connects to your Wi-Fi and allows you access via the app, uh, the Tesla T-Smart app on your phone. Get this replaced and show you what we've got. So, we at our boiler, our really old school Potterton Power Max, um, but it does have a water tank in there, as you would expect with a normal um, boiler system. Now, this is our immersion heater. Normally it has this cap on, as you've just seen, and then in normal circumstances, you would control it from a switch that's located nearby and then feeds power to the actual immersion heater. Now, what you are looking for, or what I learnt when buying, was to make sure your immersion heater had the two prongs. Now, I'll show you that in a second when I take this out. Um, I do feel that this is a DIY job. Now, I don't normally recommend doing DIY work, uh, electrical work, 
and always get you know an electrician in uh, to do this now because of the nature of this i've got a double pole isolator which i i imagine most people do but i can isolate it here which it is isolated now um and then work on it it's always worth triple checking seeing voltage and seeing the voltage go just to make sure it is isolated before doing any electrical work but what i would say is if you're the littlest bit unsure just get an electrician in this is not a long job and they shouldn't be charging astronomical astronomical amounts of money uh, to do this uh, and it would be worth getting someone in to do that get but it. it's changed over this is not a how-to um, but we'll get it changed over and uh, i'll time lapse it and show you what it does so old thermostat removed there now those are the two prongs that these plug into which you need to look at now the tesla one also has as that. you can see there when it focuses so very similar uh, but different at the same time and this just plugs in connecting to the appropriate um terminal and then yeah plug it in and uh, you're pretty much nearly there so get the time lapse back going and show you what we do So there we have it installed, albeit wonky, because the screw to hold the cap on interferes with the display in the back, but never mind. It's only in here, but it's better than it was before. So that's a positive. So if you, as you can see, we've got a display. Um, because I've had the boiler off, uh, I've just set it to boost, which boost sends it to 60 degrees. Currently at 14 degrees. Um, that's pretty much it. So the Tesla T-Smart installed now uh, and going. So I'll talk you through each setting um, and then a few other features which I think are pretty good on it. So what you have various modes. So you have your, your normal manual mode, which you set the temperature um, and then I assume the, the immersion needs to keep the water at that temperature. Then you have an eco mode. Now eco mode keeps it at 55 degrees um, to Possibly, I don't actually understand um, keeping it at a temperature, um, but that's what eco mode does. And then you've got timer mode, which is what we tend to use. So, as mentioned earlier in the video, we have a cheap overnight rate of 10p a kilowatt. So, towards the end of that rate, uh, we set um, the heater to come on to heat the hot water so it's hot in the morning. Um, but then in the day, subject to solar, uh, we do leave the gas um, cycle or schedule on just to assist this, but I am actually thinking of switching it so it's just electric. Uh, so then you have a travel mode. The travel mode sets it to 10 degrees. So if you go on holiday, um, it prevents it from freezing um, and things like that. And then you have the smart mode. Now, I'm unsure whether to give this a go. Now that traces your water usage over a seven day period, I believe. Um, and then heats the water accordingly to suit. Now, you'd hope that that was the most energy efficient. I've not tried it, but something we'll have to give a go um, at a later date. Now, a few other features it's got is anti-Legionella, as it says on the back here. Um, so, Nest thermostats do have this built in. So, it used to heat the water up to, I think it was 60 degrees every two days. Uh, if the water hadn't reached that point, just to burn off, if you like, any bacteria uh, that's sort of thrives on warm water. Um, so it does that. Now, because we no longer have Nest, we have the Drayton. I don't believe the Drayton does it. So by installing this, this does do it, which is good um, and a feature that I like. Um, so as said, we've had this for six weeks now. And to be honest, it's been pretty good. Uh, our general daily use of hot water on gas was about nine kilowatts a day through the summer. Um, 
I anticipate probably a little bit more with the colder weather now, but if, if you said nine or 10 kilowatts per day for um, gas heating, whereas the hot water is generally I think about six kilowatts. So about a saving of three kilowatts a day um, if, we, if we did both programs as the smart temperature. Now, what's worth noting is this is not the only option. Now you could, as you saw in the video of the installation is where the few switches, you could change that for a timer. You could also put a plug on that and put it in a smart plug, which is a cheaper option than this. Um, however, I do quite like what this does and maybe in the future it integrates with other products, but overall, this is actually working pretty well for us. And um, I do actually quite like it. So I would recommend purchasing it. They're about, I think I paid about 100 and maybe 90 pounds for this because I didn't go for the full housing. Uh, I think if you went for the thermostat and the full housing, it was 120, something like that. So a bit dear, but I do think it will pay you back <clears throat> even more so if you've got solar panels, which come summer, this would mean that we wouldn't use any gas pretty much between April and um, September because all the excess solar would heat the water, no problem. As I've mentioned, we are having an integrated hot water uh, system with our solar edge, uh, solar panel system or solar PV system. Uh, so this would be redundant and I'll probably sell this on, but it's, I thought it would make a good video uh, to share with you guys to understand other options to heat in hot water rather than gas. So yeah, I hope it's helped. Um, please do pop some questions down below if you do have any because I'll be happy to answer um, from my experience. Yeah, do pop any questions down below. Please do give it a thumbs up if you found it useful and you are actually going to give it a go. It'd be uh, interested to see other people's experience with them. Um, and please make sure you subscribe for more videos of this nature. Um, try not to become an energy uh, saving video, but as we are testing other options, I thought I'd share it on my uh, YouTube channel. So. Yeah, we've got one more energy video to come uh, installing radiator reflectors and um, then we'll get back to the DIY. So yeah, thank you for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.